Hi guys, so welcome to another episode of my 8 vs 16 bit challenge. Um, and this is episode 5 now, so shocked in some ways that we've, we've got this far. Um, but yeah, pleased at the same time. And so this feature is one where I, you know, a big chunk of it is actually where I experience 8-bit uh, games. Um, and it's really a chance for people to kind of share or indulge in, in their nostalgia. Uh, for these kinds of games, so you know, I grew up with a started with a Mega Drive, um, so very little exposure to 8-bit games. And so, what this is is a, a series where basically I propose a 16-bit game from my past uh, for the guys taking part um, to play, and anyone who wants to take part is more than welcome to. Um, just because the guys, you know, have now done um, four episodes, uh, there's no reason why anyone new can't join in as well. Um, so yeah, I, I share a 16-bit game and you know share a bit of my history with that. Um, ask people taking part to play that game, and then for, from from them to then share a, a, an 8-bit game from from their past um, that means something to them. They would like to then see me see me play. So chance for you know those guys to see me play their game, but also to see everyone else's choices and for all, us all to you know, either indulge in a bit of nostalgia or maybe even see a new game that we've not seen not seen before. And we, you know, been tending to see games from a variety of different 8-bit systems from, you know, mostly home computers, to be honest, but, you know, Spectrum, C64, um, Atari 800 as, as well. And so the guys taking part, I really appreciate them. So we've got um, Blue Yak, We've got um, Gary of uh, Gary Gill Gaming, Steve of Steve's Gaming, Robert of Robert's Retro Gaming, and Colin of um, Ponder's Retro Retro Goodness. Um, so they've suggested eight bit games to me to me to play. The sixteen bit game I'd suggested last time was Jurassic Park, and this is a game was one of the first few games that I that I got on the on the Mega Drive, and I have very fond memories of of playing. Um, in part being a big fan of both the film and dinosaurs in general um, and so enjoyed that as a child proposed it for people to play and almost universally people struggled with it uh, which was kind of interesting to see and it, it was kind of a nice reminder or lesson I'm not sure somewhere between those two of the fact that uh, you know games that we are familiar with and we know how to play will pick up and even if we're not playing them for a while we'll vaguely be able to play them because um, those, you know, the, the basics of the game mechanics are still in the back of our minds. For someone new coming to these, having never played them before, unsurprisingly, they they struggle. And um, that book was very apparent in seeing people playing Jurassic Park. No one got past the first level. Um, people were generally dying on things that I might not have even expected them to die on. So, you know, enemies that aren't generally too difficult to clear, or some of the environmental hazards that, um, again... If you know what you're doing, you know what to do with them. But if you don't, you don't, and then you die. And the game is kind of punishing in the, in, in the fact that it sends you back to the beginning of the stage if you do if you do die. Um, and then with some of the 8-bit games that have been suggested, I tend to record these after I've played the games uh, that will be coming. Um, there's a number of games here where I've had to kind of work the games out as, I, as, I'm, as I'm playing, where some of the guys who have demoed them you know they'll breeze through because they know how to play the games. So there's definitely a lesson to be to be learned there around the you know prior knowledge of the games definitely gives you significant advantage. Um, so yeah, this set of eight big games we've got coming up, I think it's actually a really good set, really good get, get set of games. Um, broadly, I really enjoyed them. Um, uh, whereas some other sets, you know, there has been some that either I found really difficult or just not got on with for whatever reason. So. Some good games coming up, and so yeah, let's go on to our, our first game. Okay, so here we've got our first game, and this is from uh, Blue Yak, and once again we're on the Commodore 64, and this is Aztec Challenge, as we can see the title screen here. Um, little tempter of a, of a tune there. Um, so what we're going to do, one player, press key F1. Done anything on the keyboard? Okay, just uh, fire on the uh, fire on the uh, joystick seemed to work, or maybe I pressed F1 and I had to wait. As may be the case with the Commodore 64, right? Can't quite tell if you've done the right thing or not. 
Um, I'm not getting much response though, so let's try swapping the joysticks. Exit. There we go. Is, is, is this us playing? Oh, okay, we can duck and we can jump. Okay, duck. nice to have in game music. You know, we've had some games where there's uh, where there's been a title screen, um, but then actually got game game. There is never been stuff. Uh, those low ones. Duck. Have to jump. Duck. Yeah, I definitely like the tune. Um, and, and you know, if you think about all the up to jump is completely oh that, that is horrible up to jump is completely foreign to me um because always there'd be a button to jump um but because there's not many buttons on a on a on an 8-bit computer um up is often used for jump um so so yeah let's let's try that again uh it's when it when it starts getting a bit uh here we go Oh yeah, we can't jump that. The other thing is that the game gets going instantly. There's no like, oh I jumped! Okay, we jumped that, okay, we've jumped one. The game gets going as soon as you die. Um, there's no like, oh you're dead. You know, get ready for the next game. It's straight back in. So, we saw, we died, and then got hit. Was there a different sound for the different lines? That's not a shh. The other one was a pew. But yeah, what I was going to say was, you know, this... I oh know that is the same sound as the other one, so it's not... But it's not a difference in sound between the different shop. Um, this is very similar to what, are, you know, these modern kind of mobile running games, where they're really very basic and you sort of, you know, swipe up to jump for you. Oh, we're too late there. Oh, we've jumped. Duck. And it's not easy. I think if you had a bit of practice, actually, you would probably nail this quite easily. Um, but there's someone who doesn't know the game. And you know, I think there's quite a few different flavors of screen on, on this. So let's let's try and uh, you know, try and try and complete this. I see that the, the pyramids got a bit bigger, but we can get we're getting closer. Oh, it's got bigger again. That's what we like to see. But yeah, there's a good sense of kind of, uh, you know, pseudo 3D, obviously. Um, but it feels like we're running into the screen, even though actually if you look at the animation, it's really, really basic. Um, but I think it creates a good effect. I think if, if you were playing this uh, back in the day, you'd be, you know, for the first time as I'm doing it, um, you'd, be, you'd be pretty pleased. It's going on a bit though, isn't it? Seems like you've got a bit more. The duck is quite quick, but the jump is slightly slower, so you've got to be mindful of the of the. Oh, we did it! Okay, okay. So we've got to the stairs. The stairs. Run up the stairs of the temple while stone blocks are rolled down at you. Push left and right on the stick to move. Okay, cool. Um, do we need to? We'll find out. Do we need to go up? Um. Press the fire button, so maybe I'm guessing there's just a delay while it loads the uh, loads the level. Anything? There we go. Okay, so I think we we just we just left and right on this. Okay, let's stay in the middle try and dodge. Have we not got sound on this? That's a bit strange. Oh, here we go. Just a bit of a delay to the intro. But definitely having like a, you know, a nice, a nice bit of music in this certainly is a, 
good addition if this was completely silent. You could just you could just scroll in left and right, dodging falling falling blocks. Um, but having a bit of a you know a few sound effects, nice tune. I thought we were doing alright. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, this is, you know, even just seeing the first couple of levels, you know, and, and then in Blue Yak's video, seeing, seeing more of it, because he's you know, obviously played it enough to be reasonably competent. Um, yeah, I think this is a, this is a hit. A hit with me. Um, you know, nice and simple, nicely executed, um, good tune. Scrolling is is decent. Yeah, certainly certainly can't complain, and I can imagine that you'd be uh, reasonably reasonably pleased with this uh, back in the day. Um, I've got to have a look what year the game was. I vaguely remember it being a fairly a fairly early one. Hey, we did it. Um, there's no kind of, you know, it just ends, um, which is fair enough. You know, a more complex animation is probably a bit much to expect. Um, so yeah, so we've got to the temple, we've gone up the steps, so we're now at the temple. Um, enter temple through a series of rooms protected by various devices. Hold stick left to stop, right to jump. Okay, so is it going to be auto scrolling, and we're going to hold left and we'll stop, and then hold right to jump. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. So ah, so yeah, it is auto scroll. Oh, that is horrible. Okay. Oh, and you're back to the beginning. Oh, this is brutal. They come down so fast. What? <laughs> that is, uh, that is tough. Um, but we do get to go. Oh, jump! Jump is uh, fire button is jump as well. I didn't say that in the instructions. That that will make it. Oh, once you've gone a certain distance. So I'm going to have to be careful of that when we go to the second. Okay, so this is another. We've got falling, falling blocks. Oh, I'm just clipped. Okay, we've gone to the third screen. Each one has been... Okay, jump, jump, jump. Come on. No! <laughs> and then we're back to the beginning. No, we died. Oh, this is pretty good. It's pretty good. It's uh, There's obviously a decent level of challenge, which will, you know, encourage you to, to come back. Um... Having having the uh, fire button to be jump uh, is a massive uh, enhancement to the experience. If it was if it was just right to to jump, I think I'd be more pissed off in the game. Ah, uh, we got blocked. Gonna have to uh, gonna have to call it a day here. Let's see. Let's just do do one more one more run. Once we're dead, we're done. Ah, um, we got clipped clip, clipped by a block. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, Aztec challenge. Yeah, I like it. It's uh, it, it's got a lot of kind of charm. I would say. Um, you know, it's very deliberate in its setting. Um, you know, approaching a temple, up the steps, through through rooms. Uh, you know, I presume there are further challenges as you go forward. But we've seen three three styles of the of the of the game um, in 
one in one play. So yeah, no, I, 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 this is a this is a good one. Um, probably not one I'm going to come back come back to just because it's you know the style of game is fairly basic. Um, but for firing up and playing a few a bit for the first time, um, yeah, definitely a, definitely an, an enjoyable one that that you know ticks a number of boxes and stands up enough for 10 minutes of 10 minutes of enjoyment so yeah yeah thank you blue yak and uh, good one and we're uh, now on to the next game okay so next up uh, we've got the game beachhead so this is a choice from gary gill gaming um this is the first time i fired it up so we've got one player game we're going to set skill one because presumably skill one is the easiest um okay so we've got some sort of uh global map oh we can we can move the move the cursor um i don't know what we're supposed to be doing oh, i can't go okay so am i moving am i moving the ship I assume we died. Um, not sure what we're supposed to be. Okay, so no, different low. Oh, I see. So okay, we we move maneuvered the the ship. Didn't see that one. Change the. Oh, there we go. We got a shot. I oh, missed that one. How do I change the how high we're how high we're shooting? Okay, we got that one too. Um, I thought I could kind of shoot lower, but let me just oh no, that's got away. They're going dip both ways now, so let's oh, going up. There we go. See, that's coming across, but I want to I want to be able to shoot shoot lower. There's nothing that's telling me. Oh, there we go. It is. Ah, there we go. Oh, I see. Maybe you can't move while you're while you're shooting. Ah, there we go. We've got a bit more of a hang of. Take pop shots at me. Oh, I'm sure we shot that. Yep, we shot that. Okay, we're doing alright here. Right, missed that one. This reminds me of uh, the kind of style of controls of uh, Forbidden Forest, um, which I didn't probably didn't have quite the exact right uh, ROM there. It seemed to be a bit misbehaving, but. Come on, shoot that. No, missed it. So can we shoot the, the, the big boat in the background? Not sure what we're supposed to, you know, what we're trying to achieve here. Ship destroyed, is that my ship that's destroyed? But yeah, I mean this game came out in 1983. Um, and I think for that, you know, already it's looking looking fairly decent. Okay, so we got whatever that was flying across. No, I missed that one. That one. Oh, I'm sure we hit that one too. How many we're we're supposed to hit? This does feel like it's going on a while. Ship destroyed again. Is that? I presume that's my ship that's getting destroyed. It's 
don't know why all the, uh, all the onus is on me. Surely there's an entire, entire fleet of, uh, See if we can shoot the other ship. I don't think it's going to go well for us. Can we shoot this ship? Because these, these things seem to just keep coming. I feel like we've taken out quite a few of those, uh, few of the enemy planes. Anything? No. Shit, that. Okay, another ship destroyed. So my number of ships just went up. I seem to think. Yeah, that's, that's a bit better. Black, black blocks coming from the... Uh... Oh, there we go. Something happened. Get ready, player one. I assume that was a good thing, because we... Uh, we just... Oh, not more of these. I, I, I don't know what we're supposed to be doing. Oh, oh and we're now taking pot shots at the... Ah, uh, okay. So I've got degrees of elevation. And I was... 200 meters short, so we've gone slightly... And we shot it! Okay. It, you know, it's a case of working these, working out on the fly. Um, what am I supposed to be shooting at now? What am I supposed to be shooting at? Oh, there's another boat there. That looks like it's closer. Let's go in there. And that says we're, f yeah, 4,800 meters long. So we have to come right, right down. 700 meters long. 100 meters short. That's got to be it, hasn't it? Yeah, we got it. Oh, there's another one here. This is right in the, right in the distance. So that's got to be right up on the. We've gone 71 degrees. 900 meters long. So we need to come in a little bit. Do this before they destroy us. 300 meters long. Uh, okay, let's try that. Okay, got that one. Then we've got to take these out as well. Uh, 1600 meters short. Ship short, we've only got one ship left. 400 meters short. Okay, hey, we got it. This one looks like it's even further away, so let's go a bit further. 800 meters short. So let's try that. I think we might get destroyed though. Oh no, they missed us. 200 meters short. Ah, oh, game over. Okay, so we, we, we're kind of working it out. So, so uh, you know, with the with the second one, uh, let's put some initials in. Oh, why can't games just like you've got a keyboard in front of you? Can you not like just be able to type? It's not an arcade machine. We're just um, with only a stick. Um, yeah, let's give this let's give this one more play. Um, but yeah, I, all right. It, it, with these, some of these things, because there's very little. I mean, a manual would probably help, um, but because there is very little kind of telling you what to do, you know, without a manual, you're kind of working out on the working out on the fly. Um, so yeah, this is our position of boat. Is it? What if I go to this flashing thing over here? Can I do that? Because there's like a harbour here, and then there's a flashing thing. Up the beach, uh, up the beach there. 
or if we go this way. Okay, something's happened. Ding ding. Okay, so this this kind of level is the one that I've Oh and it's got bloody tank controls as well. So we've got left and left and right to steer. Um, and then speed up, slow down, on up and down. Yeah, so so when we had that other level, or at least that even that first screen, something I'd not seen. Um, this 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 screen is is quite familiar to me. I've definitely seen Alan play it. I've probably seen Colin play it, and I've probably seen Dave Charlie Farr play it as well. Um, yeah, this one looks pretty nice. You know, you've got a few uh, coloured sausages uh, coming at you. You got some. No, that's gonna hit. No. Um, it's getting a little bit more difficult. There's a few more, a few more of the the missiles coming for us. Another one through. Hurry up. There we go. Yeah, this is alright. No, 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 that's not going to go well. Um, obviously, no perception on your ship. But the, the top of your ship uh, can be hit by the, by the missile, even though, when in reality, that, based on the view we had, it should be going behind. Okay, that's another one. Oh, another one. That's one thing I would say is it almost feels like because there's probably only a handful of mini games here, um, that they almost sort of drag on, drag on a little bit. You've got to do it more times than really, um, than really is kind of enjoyable. Down. Yeah, I'm used to the controls now as well. I wasn't necessarily expecting tank controls or boat controls in this case. Um, we've got some sound effects in game, which is which is good, I guess. Um, but no, no in-game music, so we were kind of a bit spoiled with uh, Aztec Aztec Challenge a second ago, um, with a bit of a banging tune actually. Uh, that's it, us. But yeah, this is this is 1983. So you know, in the grand scheme of things, pretty decent. Come on, that's got to be it. Yeah, there we go. Good. I see. So that kind of skipped us through. I think we still need to probably do what we were doing before, right? We need to take on this uh, set of ships. Um, so those are the ships then we see in the we see in the distance, um, and I guess the same you know same thing we're gonna have to take out the take out the airplanes. There we go, got that one. Now that I kind of know what I'm doing, it's actually much more yeah much more playable, and I think this is this is the case with both the games that I've suggested and then uh, the games that have been suggested to me um, the difference that having played the game before and knowing what to do it makes really a huge amount of, a huge amount of difference to your enjoyment um, you know when you're struggling with the controls and not even just knowing the mechanics of the game or you're not used to the mechanics of the game nah I should have uh, maybe just focused on the planes and not the ones coming across there we go. Yeah, yeah, this is this is quite nice. It's perfectly perfectly playable and again for twenty twenty two, um 
you know, something that you can play for, uh, you know, have a quick blast um, and, and have a de really reasonably decent time. Okay, so I assume now we're going to have the ones where we need to missile the ships again, so we'll find out. We'll do a pop shot. We're a thousand meters short, so we're going to have to go up. That's probably a bit too much. Let's see how this one does. A thousand meters long, oh, we went too far. Let's try that. 200 meters long. Three hundred meters short. Well off. Okay, we've got that one. Um, that's a ship down. Three thousand two hundred meters short. Stick it right up. Six hundred meters short. In order. I assume this is going to be short because uh, 600 meters long, 1600 meters long. So, like that. 300 meters long. Which be short. That should be getting it, shouldn't it? Yeah, there we go. This one's quite close. So let's go right down. Still too long. 600 meters short. Try that. Got that one. And then that one's going to be a lot longer. Four, eleven hundred short. Ah, come on, two hundred short. Hey, we did it. Okay, so we've seen three of the three of the mini games here. It's interesting, actually, the two games we've had. So we've had um, Asset Challenger and now, and now Beachhead, both of which are kind of collections of different different styles of games rather than the same style, but in different levels. So what have we got now? Ah, uh, yeah, again, I've seen... Um, is this... Have these got tank controls? They've got tank controls, but horizontal tank controls. Why don't they just have the same controls as the, the boats from earlier? Can you shoot those things? No. Can't shoot those. I'm just going to ignore that. It's not... If it can only shoot in that direction, it poses no no threat to me. Can't seem to shoot those those boxes. Um, how are we going to get through this? Go down and then up. Oh. oh, did that hit me? Ah, uh, rubbish. Okay, so holding left to to move. I feel like these should be shootable, but they're not. Yeah, in terms of another mini game, I mean this is this is fine. Um, nothing, nothing wrong with it. Other than uh, other than it being a bit tedious and that collision detection um you know a tank blowing up because it clips 
a tiny bit of a bridge is a little bit ridiculous, right? It's a fucking tank. And these blue dots, I mean, what are they? Oh, they might be mines, I guess. I was going to say, are they puddles? Because, like, again, puddle versus tank. But yeah, I think they're probably, uh, I think they're probably mines. Okay, let's go maybe up and round. Okay, very good. Ah, oh, I think maybe we could that mine. Oh, that's enough of that. Um, yeah, Beachhead. Uh, I mean, it's generally, from what I hear, I think it's generally regarded as a classic. Um, and I can see why. Perfectly, perfectly enjoyable, enjoyable game. Um, yeah, I think I think if you had this back in the day, you'd be you'd be pretty pleased. So yeah, on to the next song. Okay, so our third game is a game from Colin. Um, Retro Ponder. Uh, so this is uh, Antiriad. Um, something like Antiriad Legendary Armor or something like that. Which is uh, maybe what we're seeing, seeing here. Yeah, so I guess the guy there is putting the armor on. Nice uh, opening opening tuner. That's, uh, that's pretty good. And, and actually having this kind of animated intro yeah, it's nice. Adds to the adds to the experience, especially on a first first play, right? Um, so yeah, pretty good, pretty good presentation so far. And this um, this game came out in 1986, uh, I think. Um, yeah, you see at the bottom there, Roman numerals. But yeah, that's that's 86. Uh, press fire to play. There we go. Okay, so at the moment we're just a guy. So I assume we have to try and find the armor, and we've got uh, something uh, dropping. Uh... Oh, okay. So we can throw. We can throw things. Can we hit? Can we hit him? No, so let's let's run. The aiming's a bit a bit janky. Do we have to? I assume we can hit that thing, but we have to kind of do it from over here. There we go. Okay, so it's going to be a case of... So it's up to jump. Uh, if you're running... You can't do a diagonal jump, it doesn't look like. So if you're if you're running and you press up, you just do an up jump. Um, if you're running and you attack... Oh, if, okay. So that's a bit weird that you've got up to jump, but you've got uh, run and fire... Uh, and that's actually um... no, 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 no. Yeah, run and fire is actually uh... is actually jump. So these things are hitting me and they're just killing me. Uh, that's a bit annoying, isn't it? I don't think that's the uh, the best mechanic. The other thing is that the edge of the screen is not the edge of the screen. The edge of the screen is about there. Um... A chunk in from the actual edge of the screen. Like those guys on the edge of the screen, how are you supposed to... How are you supposed to kill them? Am I missing something here? Am I supposed to be pressing spacebar or something like that? Is there another control that... I guess you can run past some of them. E. What's that? I mean, that looks like something I should be able to pick up. Why can't I? And then the tyranny's coming to kill me. Oh, these controls are, like, janky. I can't... I can't fire up. And I can't jump and fire. E there, but I can't. I can't get it. And then the enemies. 
I assume I can't run past that thing. Oh, I can. It's just it's just a a background element. Oh no, because I was running, I did a jump. So you can't just. Oh, there's the armor. And hit it. Nope. Yeah, I did hit it. Because we got a sound confirmation that we did hit it. Okay. Oh, and then we've run off the screen, and then it's going to respawn. And it just... That's really bad, isn't it? It's... I mean, it's right there. Like, get it. No, I presume I have to approach that from a different... From a different... Um, kind of part of the screen, drop down onto it. We can jump across that. No, we can't jump across that. No, you come on a screen and an enemy spawns on top of you. Like again, that's that's not good, like game design. I don't want enemies to spawn on top of me. Okay, is that something I'm gonna have to jump over? There we go. Okay, so the pink guy that looked like he was throwing those things down. Oh, and he just he'll just come after you. Can you jump down jump down a platform? I mean I surely I'm supposed to be picking those E's up. Just to go up somewhere. But yeah, I'd say this is definitely not better than uh, Jurassic Park. I think I go that way. Run and then jump. No. I mean, I'd like to get up there. Oh, bloody... The fire and jump on the same key is annoying. I want to jump up. So I assume I'm... Oh, I've got to go up here and then... Oh, my God. Yeah, so I assume I need to go up there and then across. And I couldn't shoot that guy. He just comes for you. Do you have infinite lives in this? Possibly. Oh, you can jump up to the edge of the... Jump up to another screen and then in doing so, everything respawns. But like, how am I supposed to attack? Oh, I can jump up there. Okay, that's good. So we've gone places we haven't been previously. I feel like maybe we're supposed to have already got the uh, <laughs> already got the uh, the armor, which may make these sections much easier. Because I think when I saw Colin doing it, the armor allowed you to like fly. Oh, I mean, graphically, it's pretty alright. I think for the for the system for the C sixty four, it's um, it's pretty possible. I want to be able to kind of jump back that way. I keep. Nah, I don't think you can make that jump. Got grabbed. Sure, that's game over, or have we got? There we go. That is game over. Um, 
Interesting one. Uh, I, I would have liked to have got the armor and then seen what that seen what that did. Um, but I guess you need to know which way you're going and, and, and get to it. As just the guy firing, the controls are a little bit janky. Um, I don't like that uh, run and jump and run and, and fire for the same button because it, it, it you know it's quite likely you're gonna you're gonna do a, an incorrect input, which I did. Um, I was playing for a little bit. It's actually more sort of almost puzzly uh, in, in that you know you have to work out each screen and work out how to use your kind of limited set of movements um, for each screen. So you know I don't I wouldn't call this a bad game, but it's not like for for me playing in 2022, it it doesn't really appeal. Um, you know, and, and things like the resolution being so low having like not a lot on screen and the edge of the screen actually being within the screen um, that wasn't obvious initially either and I, I, again I don't you know if the whole screen was the screen that would give you more space to play with and so when you when you spawn or when you appear on screen and something can spawn on top of you unless you know that's going to happen you know that's also pretty pretty annoying um, so yeah as I say not a bad game but enough things to make it a bit of an annoying game um so yeah thanks thanks colin uh interesting to to see um and it's a bit like that you know if you don't know the game you you know you're gonna you're gonna struggle with it uh, in the way that most people struggled with with jurassic park so yeah cool um another interesting one um, but yeah let's move on to the next one Okay, so we're on to game number four, and that's a game from um, Steve of, of Steve's Gaming, um, and we're on the Spectrum again. And so this is the the Pyramid, uh, released in in 1983. So yeah, not much to uh, say of sort of intro screen, but we've got some we've got some text here. So it's the game. So we're going to press one for. Oh no, we can press two for a Kempston joystick. Um, this game's supposed to show us the pyramid here. I think there must be something either wrong with the, the ROM or the, the settings they have on the Spectrum, but the game itself plays fine. So it's, you see it says fire to play there. Um, so we'll press press fire. Um, and yeah, so this game is a kind of single screen uh, shooter like this. Um, and and it plays, it plays really well. Um, I literally played it just a second ago just to sort of understand the game. Um, and seeing kind of Steve uh, Steve play this, um, the jewel, you know, you shoot the enemies, shoot a certain number of the enemies, and then the jewels drop. Um, you pick up the those um, those jewels uh, when they're a certain color. Uh, so I think when they're white, they hurt you. Um, and I think if you wait till they're till they're blue, then you can drop them on uh, either side of the uh, of the screen. Which then kind of releases uh, releases them. Uh, oh, I think because we got hit there, we uh, we lost the we lost the jewel. Let's see if we. Ah, uh, yeah, there's another one. And depending on how much you kind of hammer the the fire button, um, influences the the length of shot. So if you just touch it, it it goes across most of the screen. Um, if you hold it. Um, then you get a shorter a shorter shot, but you obviously by holding it, um, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, so there we go. We've gone through two uh, bits of the pyramid, uh, and we get through to the the SP of spectrum or spectra spectra, um, which obviously is not meant to be the case. It's meant to. Uh... Okay, so the enemies are now different. This is actually they they're coming quite quickly, but hopefully this could be slightly easier. Um, because they're moving horizontally and we've got a horizontal shot, whereas when they're moving vertically. Um, so we just have to clear the path until it turns blue. And now try not to get shot. There we go. Blue at one. Um, but this kind of plays, I think, to the strengths of the, of the spectrum. Um, the spectrum, you know, is not amazing in terms of the numbers of the colors. It can show, um, and it's not necessarily great in terms of um, scrolling either. Um, so having a single screen plays to that strength. Um, but one of the things it's good at is having, you know, pretty high high resolution. 
so you've got quite quite detailed sprites, um, although although monochrome. But but again, that's that's fine. Uh, oh, we dropped it, and there was the enemy there. Um, but yeah, the character moves at a fair old fair old lick uh, on the screen, um, and it's and it's really really playable. Um, yeah, don't don't have any issues with this uh, whatsoever. Um, I think if you had it in 1983, I think you'd be pretty pretty pleased with it. Um, and you know, on a CRT television with a bit of a uh, bit of fuzz about it, um, you know, it would have probably probably looked pretty good. Um, whereas you know, seeing these sprites on, a, on an LCD, I've got it on a um, PC. PC CRT monitor, um, which even that's probably a little bit sharp uh, for, for this. Um, yeah, yeah, I like this one. Good choice, Steve. Um, and yeah, it's one I've I have seen. Um, I've definitely seen Alan play this. Probably requested by Steve. Um, I might have seen Charlie Farr play it as well. Oh, oh no! Get down there. There we go, making game break. How, so how many is that? Uh, one, two, three, four, four or five screens we've uh, we've completed here. Um, obviously, the game continues in a sort of pretty similar similar vein, um, but the enemies come at a kind of different. You know, certainly they look different on each sort of screen, which is which is good, um, and they come come at different sort of speeds and directions. Um, so there's enough to to keep a little bit of uh, interest. Got clipped there. Oh, because we got clipped, we lost the uh, we lost the diamond. No, no, no. Yeah, it's getting a little bit a little bit trickier now, which is probably a good thing. On blue. Oh, now we got clipped. Collision detection is okay. It, it feels like it could be slightly better. Maybe just you know, maybe if it was just slightly more generous, um, that would be a good thing. Okay, that one's gone blue. Oh, enemies appeared. Okay, so is that probably that's probably one more. One more diamond. There we go. This. No. Okay, I think we've got it because we 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 are now blue. Hey, there we go. Another screen done. This will be the last one, I think. Okay, these sprites are pretty cool. Definitely. Re ah, it's kind of requiring you to get between them, but it doesn't give you much room uh, to line up those uh, line up those moves. Although. Now that the you know now that you've taken a hit and some enemies have died, the patterns are less uh, regular than when it started. Uh, let's try going the the other way. I don't know if there's any kind of benefit to going on one side or the other. Uh, we lost it. Oh, that's a bit harsh. Yeah. So yeah, my only complaint I would say is that the um, sort of hit detection, you know, is a bit literal. If it was a little bit more uh, generous in being clipped, um, then I think that would actually probably only only improve it and make it just a little bit more, a little bit more playable. Um, but otherwise, yeah, nice. Like it. You know, compared to the various sort of arcade arcade shmups that we can now play in 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 you know Mame or Mister or whatever it might be, um, you know, it, it obviously uh, doesn't stand up to many of those. But in 1983, you know, you had no other option than 
been playing games on on kind of high, home uh, home systems. Um, and so for that, yeah, yeah, this would this would give you this would give you plenty of plenty of entertainment. Um, and you know, if you'd been to the arcade and and played Defender or something like that, um, you know, coming home to playing something like this uh, would give you give you at least a a, a taste of uh, or you know bring back those memories of of the arcade. Oh, they're taking out those gems. This is definitely a much, much more difficult um, level. Ah, that's another screen done. And, and it is, you know, I said I want to stop, but actually it kind of just draws you in to play one more. You know, what are the next enemies, set of enemies like? Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll stop there. Um, yeah, good choice, Steve. No, again, I think we've, you know, this is now four games. I think, you know, um, these are these have been a pretty pretty decent set, I would say. And um, you know, Steve was saying uh, there's been a few games of, of his that maybe I didn't get on get on with as as well as he might have liked. Um, yeah, this is this is a this is a good one. So yeah, with that, let's go on to our final game. Okay, so this is our fifth and final game, um, and this is a choice from uh, Robert of, of Robert's Retro, Retro Gaming, um, and surprise, surprise, we're back on the uh, Atari 800, uh, and this game is is, is Draw, um, released in, in 1983, another one from, from Brodebun. So we've had quite a few Brodebun games, um, both on the Atari and, and otherwise, and generally those games have been pretty, pretty good. Um, so let's okay hit the fire button, get going. So this is a kind of as you see a kind of multi-level sort of platformy shooter, um, where I think yeah with those so there's white sections we can go we can go up and down. That's then the edge of the stage. Okay, cool. Um, so this game is quite interesting um, from a technical standpoint. So when Robert was was playing, and um, he, he ended up playing on an emulator, playing the original original ROM, uh, which used some you know funny artifacts with the way that CRT televisions display their graphics to achieve both high resolution and color. Oh, we got hit by that bird. That was a shame. Um, well, nice, uh, nice sort of explosion effect there, which is pretty good. Um, drop down. Um, but what I've got here is uh, another ROM that I found that had, you know, said it had colour. Um, so these colours you'll see if you've seen Robert's video, which I would suggest you watch. But it's slow down, though. that's very interesting. And this is on Mister as well, so slow down is uh, legitimate. Um, ah, we found our. I think it's our sister. I think we're playing as a boy and we're trying to find our mother or find our sister and then take her to our mother. Something along those lines. A little flying dinosaur at the uh, at the top. Ah, I see those those birds take a few take a few hits. Um, oh, we got hit. Oh, and there's a map at the top. That's something we should probably pay some attention to. Um, okay, so that's me, the flashing uh, what looks a bit like the French flag uh, at the top there. There's the missile dinosaur. So maybe we have to just take all the enemies out at this point. Um, well, it looks like they're respawning. Um, but yeah, this game, this game's decent. We've really only got two positions, up and up and down. So we can catch up with that rocket on the uh, on the uh, dinosaur. Okay, it's coming through, oh, it's coming through there. There's, there's something else coming along the bottom here, though. That was another bird. A bit more turkey. Certainly, uh... Oh, we got hit by that thing. I assume that's what we're supposed to kill. Um... 
But yeah, this is this is a cool little game. Um, oh, and is that game over? Oh, oh no, no, it's not. It's back to the, uh... Oh, got hit by a magnet. I mean, that guy looks pissed. Okay, so ah, uh, see if we drop down in the magnet. Ooh, that's a bit harsh. Now, what's what's this sort of guy with the? Okay, we picked something up. Okay, so the game's loaded again now. There's something coming on this level. I don't know what it is. Oh, are they toothbrushes? Oh, is that your mother? That's your mother at the bottom there, I think. So, got to run down. Run down to here, so we can get through the level. And then we have to run all the... Oh! Oh, no! I think we have to get it as you know they were coming through the middle, so I guess we have to shoot as we're as we're rising. Um, but yeah, nice nice little game I would say. Maybe with this ROM, it's uh, it doesn't look quite as, as nice as it as it would do. Um, I don't know. I'll ask. I'll get Robert to uh, to comment on that, or maybe he can do a, a little video on this uh, color version of the ROM and uh, tell us the tell us the differences because I think this is a game that he had he had back in the day. Okay, so we can kind of see what happened. So there's the the girl at the bottom uh, chasing the chasing the balloon. We have to pick the girl up, um, and then. Trying to the, uh, that's the bird then. Don't the bird. Let's see if we can get one of those dinosaurs with a bit of rock on his back. There it is. Yeah, so I think you have to keep moving up and down, um, to catch those, catch those enemies. Yeah, I'll, I'll call it a day there actually on this one because I think the game probably continues in a similar similar vein. Um, yeah, no, I like it. I think it's nice. I think it's it's well presented. It plays it plays pretty well. It's a pretty unusual style of game. You know, this kind of you know very narrow sections where you can kind of move up and down, but then you can move between the levels as well. So um, not that I've played much of it, but it makes me think of um, um, Son Son. Uh, the okay, so I think we were supposed to. Get to that or shoot that. Um, uh, yeah, Son Son, where you kind of go up those multiple levels. I've seen um, Pingy um, playing playing that. Okay, so this is the level with the. Uh... Okay, so there's the boy. Um... What are we supposed to do now? Okay, maybe the next. I said I was going to wrap it up, but I just keep playing. Which I think is a good a sign of a good game, right? I think all of the all of the games. Um... Oh, we got taken by that guy uh, coming up through the floor. Other than possibly uh, Antiriad, um, the other four games have all been all been really good. I think um, Pyramid on the Spectrum, uh, very playable, um, good bit of fun, good bit of fun there. Um, Beachhead, you know, once you work out what each of those kind of mini games and how to play them, again, perfectly playable, the sort of thing you. You know, maybe not the deepest of games, but something you could pick up, play for a bit. Ah, I see we get back to the the creatures on the rocket. It looks more like a crocodile. The other one looked like a dinosaur. Um, yeah, uh, Aztec Aztec challenge as well. Um, I assume you, the mothers on this uh, on this level somewhere. Ah, no. Um, yeah, I think we're supposed to go to the other end. Uh, and that is the end. Um, yeah, yeah, Aztec Challenge, good fun as good fun as well. So, 
to be honest, possibly the best set of games you've had. I don't think any of the games... I think my absolute favourite of all, all the games you've had is probably Attic Attack. Um, and I think these games are not as good as that. But as a set, I think I think probably the strongest set we've had so far. So, uh, yeah, good job from uh, everyone uh, submitting games. You've obviously cho- chosen games that uh, you think I might enjoy as opposed to games I might, I might hate. Um, so yeah, that wraps up the look at the uh, 8-bit games, uh, five decent ones. Um, let's go on to the uh, next 16-bit game. Okay, so we're back on the Mega Drive here for another uh, for our 16-bit game. Um, and this game is uh, World of Illusion, uh, starring Mickey Mouse and, and Donald Duck. Um, so this is a game I had back in the day. Um, as you may guess, it is a Disney game. Uh, primarily aimed at children and if you look at games on the you know PlayStation PS2 onwards you know Disney games I think don't have much appeal to to adults whereas if you go back the Disney games on the Mega Drive were not 100% but there was a lot of quality games um, there which had appeal to both you know children and and adults um, so I had had World of Illusion. Uh, we're going to press the start button to get going. Um, so here's a little bit of story. You know, one night Mickey and Donald practicing for their big magic act. Um, one of the magic tricks surprised Donald, and he fell backward, tipping over some scenery. Behind the scenery was a mysterious magic box with a drawn curtain. Oh boy! If it works, we can use this in our magic act," said Donald. Uh, I don't know if that's such a good idea, replied Mickey, noticing a strange glow behind the curtain. But he was too late. Donald had already stepped inside. What an idiot. Is that poof? Um, poof! The uh, curtain fluttered and Donald disappeared. Mickey steps inside to inspect the box and poof! He disappeared too. Booming laughter echoed as Mickey and Donald fell through the darkness. And an evil voice said, You are good magicians in your world, but here in my world of magic, you'll have to learn many more tricks to find your way home. If you can find and defeat me, I will show you a way out of this magic box. Okay, so it set the scene reasonably well there. Um, We're going to just get stuck in, choose a player. We're going to play one player. So this game, um, as a single player, my memories of it are... You know, me. I think do you have to press start? There we go. We just get started. Okay, so you choose your player and then you press start to get, to just get going. Um, yeah, in a, as a single player, my memories of this are you know just mediocre. The game is the game is fine. Um, there's two major major controls. So B, so Genesis or Mega Drive had three three buttons A, B, and C. Um, there's two main buttons here. You've got a um, Uh, yeah, B to uh, attack, which is using your your cape here. Um, yeah, so we press uh, so to to crawl, you press down and press the jump button. So C is is jump, B is attack. Um, and yeah, enemies tend to just turn into butterflies. You know, you don't actually kill them because again, this is a game for for children. Um, I'm sure you can run. I can't remember how you how you do that. Um, kill that. We jump past it. And so here we can jump up. So again, this is another another platform game um, with some verticality. Um, nicely animated sprites. Um, and the game, yeah, the game generally looks pretty nice. Um, but what what I mostly remember. About this game is the is the is the fact that you can play cooperatively. Um, so the two-player game, you know, one of you plays as as Mickey, one of you plays as plays as Donald, and the the levels change as well. So the levels are they they are the same levels, but the way you solve some of the kind of puzzles to get from one section to the next are slightly different. So the bit where we um, you know jumped up and we uh, you know the log jumped up and then we um, 
and then it came back down and, and fired us up in the air. Um, you have to use, you know, both of your characters together um, to solve those solve those things. So Mickey and Donald can, you know, can carry each other um, to gain additional height. So you can, you know, Mickey can lift Donald up. Um, And then, you know, you can jump even higher than you would be able to otherwise. Um, if one of you gets up to a level, then you can, like, drop down a... Um, drop down a, uh, a rope to to pick up uh, the other character as well. Um, oh, I see. We, this is what we have to do. We keep jumping on the flower. Let's have the platforms. The, the kind of down and uh, jump is a bit annoying. You end up kind of crouching. Oh. You know, things like this, jumping on that flower to create the platforms. That's quite nice, I think. Although we jumped in the flower and we've got to the end of the stage. <laughs> um, I kind of vaguely remember this. Um, you know, the levels are familiar to me, but not so much that uh, you know I can I can tell you how to play. Uh, I'm still I'm pretty much working this out on the fly. Um, but it is a game kind of designed designed for for children to play, um, as opposed to um, so the level of challenge uh, you know is is lower. I guess is, that's that's my point. Um, and I mentioned that you know there are a number of decent Disney games on on the Mega Drive. Um, this being one of them. Um, but as a kind of series, this is so this is World of Illusion. Um, there is a kind of whole Illusion uh, series on the on the Mega Drive. Um, I think there's or I think it started on the on the Master System. So I think there was maybe Castle Illusion on the Master System, um, and this was within that. Uh, yeah, within that that series. Um, yeah, see, so this is quite nice. This is you know now different to, to what we've done before. We've got this spider, and we've had to follow it around. Um, you know, taking our time, and now we've got to the um, first boss. I do remember this quite clearly, actually, and the um, the change in change in music as well. So I think the there's the boss. Okay, so we took a took a bit of damage there. Um, and I think yeah, when he's behind, you can't yeah, you can't attack it. Wait. There we go. So that's the first level done. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd hope, you know, with Jurassic Park, I don't think anyone got past the, the first stage. And to be honest, neither did I uh, during my, my play. Um, here, I, I, I expect most people should be able to complete the first first level. I think the you know getting used to the control, you know, Mickey's is a pretty basic control system: two buttons, uh, jump and attack. Um, so yeah, so that is that is our next 16-bit um, game. Be interesting to see how people get on with it. I hopefully not too many kind of I guess preconceived uh, or assumptions made because it is a Disney game. Um, you yeah, know, generally I think this is a pretty well-regarded um, game on the Mega Drive. Um, not, you know, I very highly doubt anyone will be able to, um, but as a co-op experience, uh, especially if it was like a, a, a parent and a, a child, uh, you know, once my kids are kind of old enough to play this, I'll definitely be um, giving it a go with them on in, in terms of uh, playing as a kind of cooperative, cooperative game. I think it's really good, really good for that. And my sister's four years younger than me, so being able to play with her um, and her enjoying it, and also because it's Disney, kind of drawed her in. Um, yeah, very fond very fun memories memories of that so yeah if you're still watching at this point thank you very much um really ap appreciate you know anyone paying attention here particularly appreciate the guys taking part as i said previously anyone else who wants to take part you're more than welcome to um go play my game in this case uh, world of illusion on the on the mega drive um and send me a, an 8-bit game um, to feature in the in the next episode. So yeah, you guys continue to stay safe and I'll uh, I'll see you soon. Bye.